Alright, so in this video I will show you how to use the Cartoon Portrait Painting Effects Actions. Now the first thing that I'm going to show you very quickly is how to get the Actions panel to show up. Uh, it's really really easy, you just have to go to Window and then you have to click on Actions um, like this and the panel will just pop up. Uh, next I will show you how to load the actions into Photoshop. It's also really easy to do, you just have to click on this little icon right here and then click on load actions and then you have to locate the folder that you have unzipped and locate the ATN file, this file, within it. Once you have located the ATN file you click on it as I just did and then you click open. This is how the actual the actions should show up looking. Uh, already expanding just like this. But in case they don't look like this, you don't have to worry. You just if they look like this, you just have to click on this little arrow and the actions will expand, revealing the folder, the little folder will expand revealing the actions. Uh, also you should check before you start running the actions, you should check that your image mode is set to RGB and uh, is the 8 bits channel is selected like this. Once you've done that um, you're good to go basically and now I will show you how to use the actions. In this particular video I will show you the easiest and quickest way. So you just load, um, you just import your photo into Photoshop and this is how your layer should look like. Now for example if it looks like this or if it's named anything else than background you just simply go to layer, new, background from layer and that will lock your layer and automatically rename it background. So now that you've done that and that you're sure that this is how your layer looks, then you just simply choose either the first version of the actions, ignore the main one for now, you don't need it. So the main one, the main one, the first one, so the times one or the times two. Now the difference between these two is that the first one has a more, I guess, subtle enlargement of the eyes and the lips, while the second one enlarges the eyes and the lips a little bit more than the first one. In this case, I will be choosing the second one, and this this is all you have to do. You just click, you just click on it once, and then click on this triangle, little triangle button, and you wait basically for the action to do their thing. Now, um, the time the actions take to finish varies and it kind of depends on your PC speed, but especially, it does especially depend on the size of your photos. The larger the photo, the longer it will take. Um, so yeah, now the size I recommend, personally recommend you use is between a thousand and a thousand and five hundred pixels. Um, I guess you can use it on photos that are up to two thousand pixels, but personally I find that the, the actions work best on photos that just are around the range of one thousand and one thousand five hundred pixels. So that, that is the size that I recommend for best results. Uh, for larger photos I suppose you could run the actions twice. Um, yeah, but the second time around you should not use either of, the, of these two. You should use the main one because the main actions basically don't have any uh, enlargement filters in them. They just, they just kind of apply the painting effect and that's it. So now we're going to wait for them to finish, for the actions to finish. Mm, shouldn't be long now. Uh, I think this particular photo is around 1100 pixels. I'll check it once the actions are done. Alright, it, should, it shouldn't be long now. And they're done. So let me check real quick the size. 
so yes, it's around 1136 pixels. So these are the results already without me doing anything else on the photo. Uh, I do recommend when you start editing the settings just turn these off. There are three effects, you can use each of them individually or not. Um, I do uh, like to change the layer styles sometimes, for example this layer I'm gonna put it to lighten and that just kind of only keeps the highlights like this. Um, also this layer right here, uh, I usually turn down the opacity just a little bit and then this, the, the painting effect one what I like to do is I like to turn on the smart blur, which basically just smooths everything. All right, let me see. Let me turn it off for a second. So let me see off and on, and you can see you can tell the difference already, like immediately. Uh, you can obviously, if you double click on this little icon here, you can turn down the opacity a little bit if you feel like it's too much and you don't want to smooth everything too much. So I'll, I will usually go between 45 and 50, usually somewhere in the middle. Uh, next, this particular setting here below this map blur. It's just more smoothing, basically. It, it reduces the noise. It's, it's a noise reduction kind of filter, as you can see. Again, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Like so. So this is kind of the final result. Now, I did already do this particular photo, but <laughs> the previous time I recorded this video, my recording software decided not to record, so here I am recording again. But I've already applied some additional, you know, I added a selective color, a few curves, Brightness and contrast. I add a color look up, um, a color look up uh, layer, just to kind of edit. You do have to do that to just get the best result out of your photo. You can use the ones that I added here, for example, but you're not gonna get really the best result that you can from your photo. So I'm gonna show you how mine turned out when my screen recorder didn't record. So this is the before, right? And this is the after. And the way you can get this is again by just using my presets if you want, but also by adding by adding your own. So you just you keep adding levels and here I added for example a color lookup and I used the LUTs uh, in the color lookup from the came from with Photoshop so I didn't Download any other lots for anywhere from anywhere else. Color balance to just because the face looked orangey to orangey, and I softened the colors a little bit. I changed the color of the lips really quickly, although the red looks nice, but I feel like the purple just goes much better with the color scheme. And what did I do here? Oh, I think the nostril didn't look quite right this one. It looked too blue compared to the other one, to the left one, so I just painted it on, in it, on it a little bit, just really quickly. But other than that, I didn't really add anything else besides, as you can see, just the colours. So there are many possibilities many results that you can get just by turning on and off things and adding your own 
color presets as you can see so yeah this is the first way that you can use uh, the action which is the easier way you just let the actions enlarge the eyes for you and you then just have to uh, edit the settings whilst there is the second option where you can enlarge the eyes beforehand and then use the main action mm, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a separate video I try to make to, like to show both options in one video but I feel like it gets confusing so I decided to separate the options so this is option one it's the easiest one you just load your photo choose one or two I do prefer the second option to be honest because it does noticeably enlarge the eyes and the lips and it does give that cartoonish kind of effect to the photo so yeah I guess that was it for this video I hope I managed to make a clear tutorial and if you have any questions you can ask me in the comments below and I'll reply to everyone um, yeah thank you for watching